Hi, I'm David. And I'm Rachel. Welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we're coming to you from Park Foot, which is just near Ullswater and Pooley Bridge in the Lake District. Let's go and take a look around. Leisure Bit is the way to go with David, Rachel and Roxy. Let's hit the road and explore. We pick up our journey on the A66 at the Regged Roundabout and head down the A592 in the direction of Ullswater. We continue down the road for about four miles and then we come to this junction and we take a left hand turn in the direction of Pooley Bridge. On the right hand side is the Ullswater Steamers Pier. We'll be taking a trip down to there a little bit later in the video. We'll now head over the bridge and head through the centre of Pooley Bridge in the direction of the campsite. We're going to make a slight right turn at this mini roundabout, head down the road and then make another right turn when we get to the junction in the direction of Park Foot. We carry on down this road for about three quarters of a mile. Worth noting it's single file in places so you may need to stop if there's something coming the other way. We then arrive at Park Foot which is on the left hand side and we make our way to reception so that we can check in. Over the little bridge it is quite tight and then just park up in one of the bays, reception straight ahead. During check-in we were given a map of Park Foot and shown where our pitch was which was in the lakeside field. Let's head there now. Oops, it looks like that poor chap's got stuck in the mud. The grass is still really, really soft due to all the rain we've been having. To head to the lakeside section, we take a right hand turn and then we take our first left, which takes us into the field. We're on the right hand side in a new section of the park. They're still doing some work to finish this off and building a toilet block, which we'll cover off later in the video. We were on pitch number 288, which is on the right hand side. We were a little concerned the pitch wouldn't be big enough for our van. Huge, I think they could fit six of our camper vans on one pitch. We were staying on one of the new lakeside fully serviced hard standing pitches. The pitch came with a 16 amp electrical hookup. It also has water and drainage on the pitch and even came with a picnic table. The lakeside's just a couple of minutes wander from the pitch we were on and while I was finishing setting up, Rachel took Roxy down for a walk and a bit of a swim. After we were set up and Rachel and Roxy were back from their wander, we then walked into Pooley Bridge which is about 10-15 minute wander along. When we got to Pooley Bridge, we thought we'd pop into the Crown for a little bit of light refreshments. Happy bank holiday. After our refreshment, we then had a little wander around Pooley Bridge and then made our way back to the campsite along the lakeside, where we chilled out in the van for an hour or two. We decided to treat ourselves to a takeaway for tea, so we made our way up to TJ's, which is where we checked in. These pictures are nice along here, just along the side of the stream. See the daffodils out for Easter. We passed the new children's play area, which was due to open the following day. The takeaway is just on the left hand side near reception. Nice seating area overlooking the park. Had a quick look at some of the other pitches on the top end of the park and then went and had a look in the shop. 
The shop was very well stocked and carries a range of goods, probably the best we've ever seen in a campsite shop. The takeaway was then ready, so we headed back to the van. Rachel had pizza and I had loaded fries and burger. It is Good Friday and it is a Good Friday. Rained a little bit overnight last night, but the sun is out. The sky's predominantly blue. How about that for an Easter weekend? Okay, this campsite wasn't cheap. It's bank holiday. It's worth every penny. We had a good night's sleep. Um, it wasn't noisy on site whatsoever. We had read some reviews that sighted noise as an issue however we didn't have any problems last night all in all so far stunning you can see in the distance there's a steamer and Pooley bridge have a look and see how much the awakened surfboarding is wake surfing and knee boarding 30 minutes is 70 pounds and paddleboard hire is for one hour is 20 pounds this is just at the lakeside at park foot plan for today is i'm going to take a trip on the ullswater steamers i booked it last night i asked rachel if she wanted to go and she said she was fine uh, she'd been on it before between us really glad rachel didn't want to come it was £24 in adults, that would have been nearly 50 quid. If you're a member of the Caravan and Motorhome Club, there is a 10% discount you can get off it, so saved a couple of quid there. There's a lot of people getting stuck in the field here last night. Imagine it's going to get really busy today. A few more people had turned up yesterday, but I believe the site's pretty much full tonight. We have been here three times in total. We came a couple of times with friends, and then we came after our honeymoon, spent around touring the Lake District in the motorhome, and Parkfoot was one of the sites that we came to stay at. The weather got horrendous on one of the nights. We were that couple that one that was sat inside the motorhome, snug as little bugs in rugs, when the wind was howling, the water was uh, lashing down, all these tents were fleeing everywhere. When we woke up the next morning, there literally was, I think, one tent left on the site. Everybody else had gone to check into caravans or sitting in cars and stuff. It was wild, absolutely wild. As well as the walk along the lakeside, which is just down that way, there's also this walk along the top here, which has less roots and things in the way, so a little bit of an easier path to tread. We took a wander into Pooley Bridge to get some breakfast. See Pooley Bridges of New Bridge from down here. Look at that. Here's a photo of the original bridge taken by Peter McDermott back in 2010. In 2015, Pooley Bridge was destroyed by Storm Desmond. Um, the whole bridge completely washed away and one side of the village was cut off from the other. It took a long time to rebuild this bridge. It cost five million pounds. David's going to go on the steamer this morning. I'm not because I don't think Roxy will like it. Um, I'm going to go back and play at the lake with her. There are a number of pubs, restaurants, cafes and bistros in Pooley Bridge. Pooley Bridge, formerly known as Pooley, is first documented in 1252. The name derives from the pool just above where the river emerges from the lake, meaning hill by the pool. 
where there was once a V-shaped set of stepping stones. In 1764, a three-arched stone bridge replaced the stones, and this is where Pooley Bridge gets the second part of its name from. The Crown Inn, formerly known as the Robin Hood Inn, is one of the original inns from this period, opening due to a rise in popularity of the village, standing for more than 250 years. So that was the Crown for breakfast. What did you think of your breakfast? Uh, the breakfast was very nice. It was a shame when we went in that we uh, couldn't sit outside and had to move table. Top tip for you, if you go in the Crown for breakfast and you're not a resident, don't sit at one of the set tables. Absolutely cracking breakfast and it came in at £27.40 for what we had. Not the cheapest, but tasty. The village store has a good selection of things. If you've forgotten something and need to pick something up, Oh, fancy a little treat. Granny Dalbeckins is open from nine o'clock. They do afternoon teas and proseccos. The garden's beautiful. It's the car park over the other side of the river. So we cross over the bridge and we wander down this way to head towards the steamers pier and we're going to take the route today from Pooley Bridge all the way down to Glen Ridding. It's a nice bright day hopefully the weather stays nice it is forecast it could get a little bit variable with some showers but fingers crossed we should be fine. It's about five minutes walk from Pooley Bridge. Nice seating area here. See right down the lake from here. Also see the boat we're going to go on. You need to see the campsite. Accessible ramp as well. See the sailing times. The Air Force shuttle as well. This is the current season sailing times. Do check for when you visit. This is Pooley Bridge Pier and we're about to set sail on the 9.45 on Good Friday which takes us down to Glen Ridding. There's a bit of sun here today so fingers crossed it stays. Here we are, setting sail now, down to Glen Ridding. There's David on the steamer. Here we are now at the back of the boat. It's less windy at this side and you can see all the way back to Hooley Bridge where we've just come from. Really is a fantastic trip down the lake, especially if the weather's all right. I'd highly recommend checking it out. Check online because you can get some discounts as well. There's also some special offers in the winter.
you may remember Glenridding, we were here back in November uh, when we did the mountain goat trip. So we're heading back on a different boat. I think we're heading back on the Lady of the Lake, which is this one down here. So here we are now at Glenridding, just a small stop here. Today I'm just going to head back, but it's absolutely brilliant if you want to go for a walk. Um, you can also get a little ferry across to Aeroforce. Take a look in the cafe here on the pier. I grab myself a cup of coffee. After grabbing a cup of coffee from the cafe, I had to wander around. I had about 20 minutes to half an hour before the steamer was due to go back down to Pooley Bridge. Some picnic benches if you fancy a picnic. Hoping to get back to Glen Ridding a little bit later in the year, maybe May sort of time, as we've got an afternoon tea at one of the hotels around here, which we're looking forward to. I always think Glen Ridding's quite peaceful. There's the steamer heading off towards Aeroforce. The leg to Aeroforce is a different route to the normal one that goes via Pooley Bridge, Glen Ridding and Howtown. There's quite a few canoes and kayaks out, which is great to see this early in the season. Just waiting for boarding now so we can head back up to Pooley Bridge. And we're now boarded. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. Kirkston is Lakeland's highest pass and it connects the Windermere Valley to Patterdale, where Riddick. The ore was of very high quality and contained a high proportion of silver. There was some really useful information shared on the way back, including the history of the steamers. The journey takes about an hour from Glenridding to Pooley Bridge and goes via Howtown on the way. The saloon bar on the steamer did coffee, snacks and even some other drinks. This vessel is fitted with float-free buoyancy apparatus, situated on the upper deck and the guardrail. These are in the form of self-inflating life rafts, seating, life buoys. Here's the history, the original steamer. The Enterprise was a paddle steamer that was beset with problems because her paddles were continuously getting choked up with weeds. Not much is known of her demise. However, it is believed that she was pulled out onto the shore at Howtown Bay. And then in the First World War, Locals broke her up for scrap to be recycled as munitions. We're now heading back into Pooley Bridge and you can see the campsites on the right hand side of the lake. And we're now approaching the pier. There's a queue of people ready to board for the next departure down the lake. Thank you. Cheers, thanks a lot. Here we are now, back at Pooley Bridge. Lovely trip round there, highly recommended. Starts it's raining. It's bound to, it's bank holiday. So I headed back to the campsite. When we came here years ago, we always used to wander down this path and always wondered what it'd be like to live in one of these beautiful places at the other side of the lake. Look at these. They are stunning. Just after 12.30 on Good Friday and the camping field starting to busy up. Oh my goodness me, somebody got very, very, very stuck there. Glad that wasn't us. It's just starting to spit on the rain. We've just seen David come back 
on the steamer. So we're going to sit down, go and put the brew on and wait for him to come back. We booked into TJ's restaurant on the site on the Friday evening. They're in the process of building a new facilities block for this end of the site. That'll be very handy when it's open. The new lakeside showers and toilets. By the time you come to visit, you never know, they might be finished. The sheep there in the field, it's a lot busier than it was last night. Wow, 24 hours later and I can't believe how much busier it's got here. And we're off for some tea in the restaurant. TJ Bar, I think it's called. TJ Bar and Restaurant. So we'll have a look and see what that's like. And it's raining again. What's really good to see today, apart from the rain, is that the Ninja Trail's open for the kids. There's loads of kids really enjoying it. Takeaways on the left, reception. You can go pony trekking as well here. 30 minutes for £25. That's not too bad, is it? When we arrived in the restaurant, it was relatively quiet, but it very quickly started to fill up. We got there for about five. There was a couple of sections inside. One seemed to be a bar area that we walked through to get to the restaurant section. And then this section, which was predominantly people eating meals. There's a bar you can see just behind there. I'm pondering on pizza. Do you know what you're going to have? Fish and chips. Fish it's and Good chips. Friday. There's nothing oh, else yeah. you can have on Good Friday. Good thinking, Batman. Chips. Rachel went for the pie in the end. Look who we found down by the lake. It's Rachel and Roxy. It's cracking to have the sun out again. Can you believe that? That's three days in a row the sun's come out. When Rachel said she wanted to come to Park Foot and the Lake District for Bank Holiday, I was quite apprehensive. But do you know what? It's been absolutely amazing. Thanks, Rachel. What an amazing weekend. I'm so pleased we came away. I know it was a little bit more expensive than normal, but it was so worth it. You forget how beautiful England is and the Lake District it's absolutely magical. Filled up a canny bit. I'm reckoning it must be breakfast time. The first outdoor bacon on the go of the year. We've got the air packed in. We lost a bundle of coffee. Look at that. Lovely. Looking forward to when you can have bacon without your coat on. Looks like breakfast's ready. Let's get it served up. Cheers. Nice and crispy. Mm. Crispy this morning. Some would say overdone. <laughs> Well that's it, all good things must come to an end and unfortunately for us this was the end of our break in the Lake District for the Easter Bank Holiday. I'd go back there again. Would you? Yeah, I'm one of them pictures. It'd be better when the toilet Rachel, what have you thought of Park Foot? I have had an epic time. It's been amazing. The pitch is huge, 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 huge. The restaurant facility is absolutely amazing and the lake, just fantastic. I've really enjoyed it. In fact, I wish we were staying longer. What about you? Yeah, I think it's been really good. I was a little apprehensive coming on a bank holiday weekend. It was also, I don't think we've covered the cost yet unless you spotted it in the graphic. Uh, it was £61 a night, £60 plus a pound for Roxy. Um, so it was fairly expensive, but do you know what? If we'd have gone where we thought we were going to go, which was to a rally, it got cancelled, so we would have been able to go nowhere. And I am so pleased we came along, and thank you, Rachel, for suggesting it. It's been brilliant. We've had such a lovely time, really have. And, you know, to be able to walk from your pitch, 
a minute, two minutes down a little track to come to this beautiful, stunning lake is worth it. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And we'll catch you for the next bit. Bye. Bye.